3500 BC. The Rig Veda, an ancient sacred poem of India, is said to be the first written record of prosthesis. 1552 BC. An obscure document called the Therapeutic Papyrus of Thebes marks the first recorded reference to mental retardation. 470 to 399 BC. The philosopher Socrates challenges Athenian citizens to consider what constitutes a good quality of life. 355 BC. Aristotle said those, quote, born deaf become senseless and incapable of reason, unquote. 335 to 280 BC. The physician Herophilus founds one of the earliest medical schools in Alexandria. He finds connections between brain defects and disability. 6 BC to 30 AD. The life of Jesus Christ. 130 to 200 AD. The Greek physician and scholar Galen recognizes the brain as the central organ of the nervous system and the seat of intellect. 476 to 1000 AD. The Dark Ages, a time marked by indifference, neglect, and fear. 787 AD. Dathius, Archbishop of Milan, founds the first asylum for abandoned infants. Quote, as soon as the child is exposed at the door of the church, it will be received in the hospital and confided to the care of those who will be paid to look after them. 980 to 1037. The physician Avicenna proposes treatments for meningitis and hydrocephalus and defines levels of intellectual functioning. 1403. St. Mary of Bethlehem, more well known as Bedlam, begins to receive mental patients in England. 1500. Girolamo Cardano, 1501 to 1576, is the first physician to recognize the ability of the deaf to reason. 1452 to 1519. Leonardo da Vinci, Italian artistic and scientific genius, studies anatomy and the functions of the brain. 1493 to 1541. Paracelsus distinguishes between mental illness and mental retardation. 1547. Bedlam is declared a hospital exclusively for the insane. 1536 to 1614. Felix Platter studies mental alienation, a precursor to psychiatry that includes both mental retardation and mental illness. 1601. Poor laws are enacted in Elizabethan England. 1620. The first book on teaching sign language to deaf people containing a manual alphabet is published by Juan Pablo de Bonet. 1752. First hospital in the American colonies for the treatment of people with mental illness opens in Pennsylvania in a private home. The patients are moved to the Pine Street Hospital in Philadelphia after it opens in 1756. 1758 to 1828. Franz Joseph Gall, a highly respected brain anatomist, identifies 39 distinct areas of the brain associated with intellectual functions. 1798. A system of marine hospitals is established to care for sailors who are sick or have become disabled. 1755. The first free school for the deaf opens in Paris by Abbe Charles de la Paix. 1755. Samuel Hynek establishes the first oral school for the deaf in the world in Germany. 1760. Thomas Braidwood opens the first school for the deaf in England. 1768. The public hospital for persons of insane and disordered minds opens in Williamsburg, Virginia. Its first patient is Zachariah Mallory of Hanover County, Virginia. 1776. U.S. Declaration of Independence. 1777. Arnaldi, a German pastor, believes education of the deaf should begin as early as four years. 1782-1840. Jean-Etienne Dominique Esquirol divides mental retardation into two levels, idiocy and imbecility. 1780s. Valentin Hoy 
develops embossed print and claims that blind persons can be taught. 1784, Abba Silvestri opens the first school for the deaf in Italy. 1788, U.S. Constitution. 1790, in Paris, Pinel unshackles people with mental illness. 1791, the U.S. Bill of Rights is adopted. 1792, the French Revolution recognizes the innate dignity and worth of all human beings. 1797, Maryland Hospital in Baltimore City is established as, quote, a hospital for the relief of indigent sick persons and for the reception and care of lunatics, unquote. 1798. A system of marine hospitals is established to care for sailors who are sick or have become disabled. 1799. Victor, the wild child, is discovered in the woods of Aveyron, France. 1801. Jean-Marc Gaspard Itard publishes Dell Education d'un homme sauvage, which describes his efforts to educate Victor, the wild boy of Aveyron. 1805. Russia's medical inquiries and observations is the first modern attempt to explain mental disorders. 1809. Louis Braille is born at Couvray, near Paris. At three years of age, an accident deprives him of his sight, and in 1819, he is sent to the Paris Blind School, which was originated by Valentin Hoy. 1815. Thomas H. Gallaudet departs for Europe to seek methods to teach the deaf. 1816. Laurent Clerc, a deaf Frenchman, returns to America with Thomas H. Gallaudet. 1817. Connecticut Asylum for the Education and Instruction of Deaf and Dumb Persons, the first permanent school for the deaf in America, opens in Hartford on April 15. 1822. American School for the Deaf adds vocational training to the curriculum. 1824. The Connecticut Retreat for the Insane, later renamed the Hartford Retreat, and now named the Institute for Living, admits its first patients. 1825. Louis Braille learns of a military method of communicating at night through the use of 12 raised dots on paper. In 1829, he simplifies the code to a six-dot system for use by the blind. Samuel Gridley Howe opens the New England Asylum for the Blind, later renamed the Perkins School for the Blind, in Boston. 1837. Panic of 1837. Over 600 banks fail by the end of the year. 1838. The Ohio Lunatic Asylum in Columbus admits its first patients from the Commercial Hospital and Lunatic Asylum of Cincinnati. 1840. Edward Seguin is appointed head teacher of a class of idiot children at the Salpetriere in Paris, France. At this time, he starts a private school in his home. 1841. Dorothea Dix advocates to place persons with mental illness in hospitals for treatment. 1842. A school for idiots opens in the Bicetra with Edward Seguin as teacher. 1842. P.T. Barnum opens the American Museum in New York and exhibits freaks. 1843. Edward Seguin is fired from the B. Cetra, accused of abominable practices. 1846. E. F. Backus in New York introduces the first legislation to provide for separate treatment for the feeble-minded. 1847. Thomas S. Kirkbride publishes On the Construction, Organization, and General Arrangements of Hospitals for the Insane. Samuel Gridley Howe admits first idiot pupil to his school in South Boston. 1848. Dorothea Dix appeals to the 30th Congress for federal funding of state facilities for persons with mental illness, mental retardation, and epilepsy. Hervey B. Wilbur opens a private school for idiots in Barr, Massachusetts. 1851. 
Thomas Hopkins Gallaudet dies on September 10. 1852. A school for feeble-minded youth opens in Germantown, Pennsylvania. 1855. A school for feeble-minded youth opens in Albany, New York. 1857. A school for feeble-minded youth opens in Columbus, Ohio. 1858. Isaac Curlin publishes The Mind Unveiled, or A Brief History of 22 Imbecile Children. 1859. Charles Darwin publishes On the Origin of Species by Means of Natural Selection, or The Preservation of Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. 1860. The Braille system is introduced to America and is taught with some success at the St. Louis School for the Blind. 1860s. Facility for the Feeble-Minded opens in Kentucky. 1861. The American Civil War, 1861 to 1865, brings 30,000 amputations in the Union Army alone. 1863. Panic of 1857 creates pressure for facilities to keep students in training school. Population at the Pennsylvania Training School is 175. 1865. New York adopts the Willard Plan, which includes separate facilities for chronic cases in an attempt to reduce costs. 1866. Edward Seguin publishes Idiocy. The same year, he publicly argues against large institutions. Samuel Gridley Howe speaks against building large institutions in a keynote address at Batavia, New York. St. Peter's State Hospital, later named the St. Peter Regional Treatment Center, admits its first mental patients in Minnesota. 1866. A National Home for Disabled Union Soldiers is established. 1867. Horatio Alger publishes Ragged Dick, or Street Life in New York, suggesting that any boy in America can rise to success if he is intelligent. 1868. Fourteenth Amendment is passed, providing equal protection of laws and due process. 1869. Francis Galton publishes Hereditary Genius. Facility for the Feeble-Minded opens on Randall's Island in New York City. 1870-1952. Maria Montessori, influenced by Edward Seguin's teaching methods, becomes a pioneer in teaching children with and without disabilities. 1871. Population at the Pennsylvania Training School reaches 185. 1872. Alexander Graham Bell opened speech school for teachers of deaf students in Boston. 1876. The Association of Medical Officers of American Institutions for Idiotic and Feeble-Minded Persons is founded. Edward Seguin is the first president. 1880. The National Association of the Deaf is founded. 1882. Institution in Syracuse, New York, opens farm colonies. 1883. Francis Galton, a cousin to Charles Darwin, coins the term eugenics. 1887. Woman admitted to the National Deaf Mute College, now Gallaudet. 1888. Maryland opens the Asylum and Training School for the Feeble Minded. Late 1880s Pennsylvania adds a girl's cottage for 80 women of childbearing age. 1889. Laura Bridgman, world-famous blind student of the Perkins School, dies at age 60 of pneumonia. 1892. Ellis Island opens. 1894. National Deaf Mute College becomes Gallaudet College. 1896. Charles Eliot Norton, editor of the North American Review, advocates for the painless destruction of insane and deficient minds. 1897. Martin Barr discusses benefits of desexualization at the Association for Medical Officers of American Institutions for Idiotic and Feeble-Minded Persons. 
1899. Boston starts special education classes. Teachers are sent to Massachusetts Institution for the Feeble-Minded at Waltham and Elwin Institute in Pennsylvania for training. 1900. Sigmund Freud publishes The Interpretation of Dreams. 1901. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania starts special education classes. 1903. U.S. Congress bars immigration of epileptics. 1904. Martin Barr publishes Mental Defectives. 1906. Rome State Custodial Asylum for Unteachable Idiots in New York opens a farm colony, the Brush Colony. Research department at the training school in Finland, New Jersey is begun. Henry H. Goddard is hired to head the laboratory. 1907. Indiana passes sterilization law. 1909. Gennard Dibwat, grandfather of the self-advocacy movement, is born in Germany. Clifford Beers, a young businessman who had a mental breakdown and recovered, writes about it in A Mind That Found Itself. 1910. Lutchworth Village, an institution for the feeble-minded, opens in New York. 1911. New Jersey Legislature authorizes statewide special education classes and mandates eugenic sterilization for certain categories of adult feeble-minded. Henry H. Goddard publishes The Kallikak Family. Davenport and Florence H. Danielson publish The Hill Folk. 1913. Wisconsin Legislature authorizes sterilization to stop the breeding of mental defectives. 1915. Operating expenditures at the Rome State Custodial Asylum for Unteachable Idiots for fiscal year equals $228,893, or $12.81 per inmate per month. 1916. Terman revises the Binet test and introduces the term intelligence quotient, or IQ. 1917. Charles Bernstein at Rome State Custodial Asylum opens first colony for females working in factories. Henry H. Goddard presents data that 40 to 50 percent of immigrants are feeble-minded. U.S. Congress declares war with Germany and enters into World War I. 1918. New York sterilization law is found to be unconstitutional. 1921. The American Foundation for the Blind, or AFB, a nonprofit organization recognized as Helen Keller's cause in the United States is founded. 1924. Congress passes the Immigration Restriction Act. 1926. Arthur H. Estabrook and Ivan E. McDougall publish Mongrel Virginians, The Wind Tribe. 1927. Buck v. Bell. Supreme Court case that permits sterilizations. 1930. Harvey M. Watkins questionnaire of 317 members of the American Association on Mental Deficiency finds that 80% favor sterilizations. 1931. 27 states have enacted sterilization laws. 1933. Germany enacts the law for the prevention of genetically diseased offspring permitting forced sterilization for people with perceived genetic disabilities, such as epilepsy, schizophrenia, manic depression, deafness, congenital feeble-mindedness, Huntington's chorea, and blindness. 1934. Third Reich begins sterilization of Germans. 1935. The League for the Physically Handicapped forms to protest discrimination by the Works Progress Administration, or WPA. 1936. The Children's Benevolent League organizes, later known as the Washington Association for Retarded Children. 1938. The March of Dimes begins treatment centers and fundraising for children and adults with polio. 1939. Dr. Foster Kennedy, head of the Euthanasia Society of America, urges legalizing euthanasia for, quote, born defectives who are doomed to remain defective. Hitler commences Action T4, mercy-killing program of the sick and disabled. 
1941, U.S. Congress declares war with Japan and enters into World War II. 1942, the population of Rome State School reaches 3,940, with 1,000 living in colonies. 1945, World War II ends. Nazis had murdered 18 to 26 million people in death camps. 2,000 paraplegic soldiers survived the Second World War, compared with only 400 from World War I. 1947, parents discuss forming a national advocacy organization during an AAMD conference in St. Paul, Minnesota. 1948, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopts the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. The United Cerebral Palsy Association is founded. 1950. The National Association for Retarded Children is formed. The Muscular Dystrophy Association is founded. 1953. Ed Roberts, father of the independent living movement, contracts polio. 1964. Ed Roberts enrolls at the University of California, Berkeley. 1965. Robert F. Kennedy attacks the Rome and Willowbrook State Schools in New York for appalling conditions. Civil rights marches in Selma, Alabama. The Voting Rights Bill becomes law, nullifying local laws and practices that prevent minorities from voting. Malcolm X is assassinated on February 21st. 1955. The Montgomery Bus Boycott. 1956. Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas. Court ruling that separate but equal segregated schools violate the 14th Amendment to the Constitution. 1957. Southern Christian Leadership Conference, SCLC, is founded to coordinate localized Southern efforts to fight for civil rights. 1960. The Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, is formed in Raleigh, North Carolina, by a group of Shaw University students. The Greensboro sit-ins begin in February, protesting segregated seating in a Woolworths diner. In two months, the sit-in movement spreads to 54 cities in nine states. Thurgood Marshall, National Counsel for the NAACP, warns against accepting token integration. 1963. The March on Washington is the largest civil rights demonstration to date. Martin Luther King Jr. delivers a speech entitled, I Have a Dream. 1967. National Theater of the Deaf is founded. 1968. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is assassinated on April 4th. 1969. Pennsylvania Association for Retarded Children sues their state over poor conditions. 1970. Ed Roberts and his peers at Cowell, the UC Berkeley Health Center, form a group called the Rolling Quads. The Rolling Quads form the Disabled Students Program on the UC Berkeley campus. Wyatt v. Stickney Court Case in Alabama paves the way for deinstitutionalization across the country. 1971. The United Nations adopts the Declaration on the Rights of Mentally Retarded Persons. 1972. Pennsylvania Association for Retarded Children v. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania rules that exclusionary provisions in Pennsylvania's compulsory school attendance laws are unconstitutional. Geraldo Rivera's TV report on the Willowbrook State School and Letchworth Village is aired to millions of viewers. 1972. The New York State Association for Retarded Citizens brings a class action suit against the state of New York, alleging severe violations at the Willowbrook State School and Hospital. Section 504, or Public Law 92603, is added to the Rehabilitation Act, forbidding employment discrimination against people with developmental disabilities in federally funded programs. 1972. The Center for Independent Living opens in Berkeley, California. England holds a national conference sponsored by the Spastic Society and organized by the Campaign for the Mentally Handicapped. 1973. Canada holds its first self-advocacy conference. 1974. 
Disabled Women's Coalition, founded at UC Berkeley by Susan Seigal and Deborah Kaplan. Self-advocates in Oregon and Washington State organized the first U.S. self-advocacy conference. Wyatt v. Adderholt. Federal court rules that Alabama's eugenic sterilization law is unconstitutional. 1975. The United Nations adopts a declaration on the rights of disabled persons. 1977. Activists take over the San Francisco offices of the U.S. Department of Health, Education, and Welfare to protest Secretary Joseph Califano's refusal to sign meaningful regulations for Section 504. The action became the longest sit-in of a federal building to date. The historic demonstrations were successful, and the 504 regulations were finally signed. 1978. The federal government agrees to fund independent living centers. 1980. Self-advocates in Minneapolis picket their sheltered workshop for a union election. 1980-83. Sears Roebuck and Company begins selling decoders for closed captioning for television. 1984. Voting accessibility for the Elderly and Handicapped Act ensures that all polling places must be accessible. 1980s. Group homes become common in communities, providing a least restrictive environment for individuals with developmental disabilities. 1985. 19 states still have laws permitting the sterilization of persons with mental retardation. Mental Illness Bill of Rights Act expands coverage of protection and advocacy to cover mental illness. 1979. The Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund, or DREDF, is founded in Berkeley, California. 1984. George Murray becomes the first wheelchair athlete to be featured on the Wheaties cereal box. 1985. The National Association of Psychiatric Survivors is founded. 1986. Toward Independence is published by the National Council of the Handicapped, now National Council on Disability, recommending creation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. 1987. The last residents move out of the Penhurst Institution in Pennsylvania. Across the country, people are leaving institutions and moving into their communities. 1987. Marley Matlin wins an Oscar for her performance in Children of a Lesser God. 1987. The Axis Dance Troupe is founded in Oakland, California. 1988. Deaf President Now protests at Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. Dr. I. King Jordan, the first deaf university president, is named. Adapt demonstrators take on inaccessible Greyhound buses. 1989. Opening of a memorial museum for the victims of euthanasia and special treatment at a psychiatric hospital in Bernburg, Germany. 1989. Mouth, the voice of disability rights, begins publication in Rochester, New York. 1990. Adapt. Wheels of Justice Action in Washington, D.C. The Americans with Disabilities Act, or ADA, is signed by President Bush. The Secretary of Transportation, Sam Skinner, finally issues regulations mandating lifts on buses. Self-Advocates Becoming Empowered is formed during a meeting in Estes Park, Colorado. 1990. The Autism National Committee is founded. 1990. The Education for All Handicapped Children Act is amended and renamed the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. 1991. Jerry's Orphans stages its first annual picket of the Jerry Lewis Muscular Dystrophy Association Telethon. 1991. Federal Home of Your Own initiative begins. After seven years, Sharon Kolowski, a woman disabled from an accident is finally able to leave the protective custody of a nursing home and live at home with her partner, Karen. 1993. Wade Blank, one of the founders of ADAPT, dies trying to save his son from drowning. 1994. 
The Remembering with Dignity project begins in St. Paul, Minnesota, with the goal of placing names on the numbered graves in Minnesota's institutions and getting an apology from the state for years of abuse, neglect, and abandonment. Death of Roland Johnson, a nationally recognized advocate for all people with disabilities. 1995. The first international symposium on issues of women with disabilities is held in Beijing, China, in conjunction with the Fourth World Conference on Women. 1995. Sandra Jensen, a member of People First, is denied a heart-lung transplant by the Stanford University School of Medicine because she has Down syndrome. After pressure from disability rights activists, administrators there reversed their decision. And, in January 1996, Jensen becomes the first person with Down syndrome to receive a heart-lung transplant. 1996. Not Dead Yet is formed by disabled advocates to oppose Jack Kevorkian and the proponents of assisted suicide for people with disabilities. 1996. Senator Robert Dole becomes the first person with a visible disability since Franklin Roosevelt to run for President of the United States. Unlike Roosevelt, he publicly acknowledges the extent of his disability. 1996. Rodonna Freeman, self-advocate in Minnesota, purchases a home of her own. 1998. The Remembering with Dignity project secures the release of names of people buried anonymously in the Faribault Regional Treatment Center and begins to mark the gravesites with proper headstones. The state of Minnesota refuses to apologize. Fourth International People First Conference held in Anchorage, Alaska. 1999. The Supreme Court upholds most integrated setting requirement in the Olmstead case. Death of Irving Martin, a national self-advocacy leader from Minnesota. 2000. Tenth anniversary of the ADA. Fewer than 50,000 people living in public institutions. 2001. In Alabama v. Garrett, the Supreme Court rules that state employees can no longer sue their employers for money damages under the ADA. This decision weakens federal civil rights protections. As the Senate is divided 50-50, Senator Jim Jeffords leaves the Republican Party and becomes an independent. Members of SABE meet with Senator Jeffords the same day. Hijacked airplanes on September 11th kill nearly 3,000 in New York City after the World Trade Center towers collapsed. Another airplane crashes into the Pentagon in Washington, D.C. Gunnar Dibwad, a founding father of Inclusion International and lifelong supporter of self-advocacy, dies at age 92. SABE, ADAPT, and NCIL sign a statement of solidarity. 2002. The National Organization on Disability establishes the Emergency Preparedness Initiative to address the special needs of people with disabilities in emergency situations. Paul Wellstone, U.S. Senator from Minnesota and strong supporter of disability rights, dies tragically in a plane crash with his wife Sheila and several close friends. Justin Dart, a prominent leader in the international disability rights movement, dies at age 71. 2003. ADAPT members and allies march from Philadelphia to Washington, D.C. in support of Mikasa. Self-advocates demand language change. By executive order, the President's Committee on Mental Retardation changed its name to the President's Committee for People with Intellectual Disabilities. 2004. SABE and Project Vote produce resources highlighting voting issues faced by people with developmental disabilities. 2005. The Birmingham Civil Rights Institute in Alabama hosts an exhibit on disability history, featuring the struggles and accomplishments of people with developmental disabilities. SABE stirs debate when it protests the Alliance for Full Participation Summit planned for September 2005, asserting that the voices of self-advocates are not being heard. After much discussion, SABE and other sponsoring organizations come together and host the conference. Over 2,500 people attend. Terry Chavo dies on March 31st after her feeding tube is removed. Hurricane Katrina hits the Gulf Coast in late August 
causing thousands of deaths and destruction across coastal regions of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. 2006. West Virginia is the first state to require all students to study disability history. 2007. Global financial crisis leads to fewer services available to people in need. The United Nations adopts the Convention on the Rights of Persons. 2008. Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, amendment expands coverage to more people. Barack Obama becomes the first African-American president of the United States. 2009. Self-advocates becoming empowered, SABE, issues a position paper calling for an end to subminimum wages. 2010. The Affordable Care Act increases accessibility and affordability of health insurance. 2011. Alabama becomes the 12th state to close its public institutions housing people with disabilities. 2012. The U.S. Department of Education rules that all students must have equal opportunity to participate in extracurricular activities, including sports. 2014. Rhode Island agrees to landmark settlement regarding sheltered work, addressing the rights of people with disabilities to receive employment and daytime services in the broader community. This panel was sponsored in part by People First of Alabama in honor of the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Movement.